Welcome to Driving to the Res. Is that the name of it? Yeah. <laughs> Are you sure? <laughs> driving to the Res. I don't think it's Driving to the Res. What is it? Another episode of what? Driving to the Res. I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> you don't remember the name of your podcast. I don't. I'll, I'll, I think we've switched timelines or something. <laughs> what did you think it was called? Like sailing to the res or go, going to the... I think there was some other mode of transportation involved besides driving. <laughs> I'm a bit confused. Oh my gosh. All right, well, drive into the res. We I, are driving to the res by a hoko. <laughs> yeah, the hoko. In a couple of days. Yep. So last night you woke me up in the middle of the night. I did? Yeah, you said you got a download. Oh, remember? I don't remember that. Well, I remember that I said that. I didn't realize that I woke you up to tell you. Well, I think I might have been up all night, honestly. I don't remember really sleeping much for some reason. I thought I told you before we went to bed. Mm, no. Interesting. Time's a bit wobbly, huh? But yeah, yesterday I received a really long, very intense download, and as I was receiving it, I knew I wouldn't remember it afterwards, but it, it started to come out as needed, right? Yeah, there were, do you remember, it was a, sort of like a council of um, elders? Yeah. Yeah, so on the drive out of the rest today, I remembered a, a snippet of it came through, it was really fascinating. It was like, I will, I will describe it the way that I could interpret it because all this stuff is energetic, so any words that we give it are colored by our culture and everything else. And to me, what it looked like, the imagery that came through was that I was sitting in a semicircle of being. And these beings, they were big and they were beautiful. And the best words that I can describe them with would be they were our racial or, or even our species elders. Racial and species elders. And I say races because it felt like they came from different planets. Like I've talked about how I look at the human beings from all over the world as coming from different planets where the human collective have established human life. And to me, a human is a human physical body with a soul. So it's a physical body elemental, humanoid in, in shape, that also has a soul and that would make a human being. That's how I describe a human being. And these people, these beings, were our ancestors. That's how it felt. They were beautiful. And as I was sitting there, they were all looking at me. All of them in the semicircle, they were looking at me. And I remember thinking that the feeling that I had from them wasn't like a question. It wasn't... Or the elk again. Oh, elk. Ah, more elk, they're beautiful. So anyways, I didn't feel that they were um, asking me anything or waiting for me to do something, but it felt like the, the energy was like supportive and almost like an energy of we are here, you're not alone, right, like that, we're here when you're not alone, you're supported, but also you support, we're, it's very similar to that energy of our strength is your strength and your strength is our strength, like that, that type of energy, that's how it felt. Like that, when you met the elemental shamans? Yeah. Same. Yeah, same. Same feeling of support? Feeling. Yeah. Same but a feeling. different group. Right. Elder ancestor mm -hmm. energy. 
not Lemurians, but nope. human elders. For human the elders, yeah, from different planets. Different races, different planets, different. Yeah. Our species elders. That's how I felt. Like the Planetary Council, but nope. of the humans. Well, the Planetary Council has all the beings, all the sentient life here on Earth. Right, right. So, like the Planetary Council of humans. Um, it wasn't from this planet. But all of them were here, present on the planet, right? Well, I don't know. Maybe I was somewhere else. I know that the imagery and the vision came, but I could have been somewhere else in the universe. So, I don't think it was linked to this planet. Oh, really? Yeah. Just were they linked to humans? Yes. They were linked to humans here. Well, linked to humans here on this yes. planet? And all other planets. Oh. That's what I mean by, like, species elders, not necessarily... Earthling human. Earthlings, right? Just human species elders. Yeah. So, like, not planetary council of humans, but universal... Council of Humans. That would be more accurate, yes. Well, that's very um, interesting. And the energy was beautiful, and then on the way out of the res, <laughs> we pulled a card about it, because it was right. like, it was like, yeah, we wanted to check out, well, you know, if they're trying to communicate something, what is it that they're trying to communicate? And the card that came out was really beautiful, and very on on point on point it was it perfectly illustrated what I was feeling that, which was made it really nice I'm going to look for the card now and tell you what it is and um, for copyright's sake I will tell you that the cards that I'm looking at are by Kyle Gray and they're called Angels and Ancestors Oracle Cards. Okay. <laughs> so that covers that copyright thing. Because I'm going to read you what the cards was. And it's used for educational reasons. And the card was called Stargazer. Set your sight higher. Stargazer. Which was, again, immediately when I saw the title, I thought, yeah, that's feels like it's universal, universal instead of uh, planet. In universe, exactly. It's not about this planet, it's about the universe. But obviously, it's, I think it does have to do with the split that we're going through right now and how we need to stay on really, really in high frequency and not fall for the, all the stuff that's been going on. Can you believe you just said the split that we're going through right now? Yeah. What about it? Not the split that we're waiting for. <laughs> oh, right, yes, uh-huh, 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 yep, you got it, okay, let's see, looking for your page, yeah, seventy-eight, thanks for the light, stargazer, set your sights higher, message, go beyond your limitations and believe that the impossible is possible, I think that's one of those things that is really key because I've talked about how we can embody the new paradigm but also bring forth the new paradigm into physicality, into this planet. And things like teleportation or um, zero point energy and all these things. And I've been teaching my students and people who listen to me for years now, use your imagination. Right? Imagine, like, the impossible. If you think something's impossible, just daydream it like it's possible. Yeah. Because that's what brings things forward in our reality. That's how all of our technology came through. Somebody daydreamed it. And now we have cars, we have roads, we have iPhones, cell phones, we have all sorts of everything. Everything that humans have created, somebody daydreamed at one point in their life. Literally everything you can imagine. Everything. Yeah, <laughs> totally everything. And so that believe that the impossible is possible 
it, it really touched me because to me they split it's like I know and I've heard it and I've talked about it but I've lost kind of faith a lot of times in my life you know and, but I then I, I stand up again brush my negativity off and look at what's going on and I know that the reality that we're experiencing right now is it's very very different to what's being told in the news so I know that if people follow those instructions to start creating new work and new education new systems for our collective that are high frequency the masses will will pick them up really really quickly really quickly Okay, so the card goes on. Do you ever remember wishing on a star when you were a child and in your innocence believing that your wish would come true? Absolutely, I remember that. Do you remember that? I still do that. <laughs> yes, we do. The star case connects with the energy of the cosmos and reminds you that you have the ability to draw in support from the universe. Draw in support from the universe. So that again, made sense to me because that planet, not planetary, but the, universal the ancestral human, universal group of, of councils, elders, council of elders, yeah, council of elders, <laughs> we've come up with a good title for yeah, that, yeah, we have come up with a really nice title for that, universal they're supporting council us, of human they're elders. supporting the high frequency faction of the, hu the humans here on this planet, they are here with us, that's okay. So, his cloak with its sparkles and lights shows you that you are closer to the energy of the universe than you think. You don't have to go out looking for it, it's already there. So look beyond where you are and create even bigger dreams, visions and goals, because with the power and help of the cosmos, those wishes can come true. Extended message. You are on the verge of a miracle, and that really touches me because it's like we are on the verge of a human miracle here on this planet. All of your dreams and aspirations are within your grasp and you're being guided to focus on your vision. The angels who are with you are encouraging you. There is nothing that you cannot have or achieve. There's an opportunity at this time to heal an old wound or pattern of lack and not feeling good enough. In the past you've often found it impossible to recognize your worth and to believe that you are deserving of blessings. Angels and ancestor wisdom is reminding you that you are an incredible and infinite spark of the universe. And the universe is not only within you, it absolutely adores you. The universe adores you. You're talented, filled with strength and have the abilities, abilities you need to turn your wildest dreams into reality. And yeah, that's why that card like makes so much sense to me. And um, there's a there's a few things you know we've talked about it in the previous um, podcasts. And one of them is when I think about what I want to do right now is to create tools that will lift the veil the veil of forgetfulness from our eyes and our awareness fields and our minds and our hearts. So that's what I'm going to be working on <laughs> for the next few weeks. But it's pretty much, it, it's really, really strong what this Council of Elders for our human collective means to us at this time on this planet. It has a deep, deep meaning. What do you think about it? Well, it's pretty, um, pretty remarkable, really. I suppose uh, one of the things that came into our life recently was the we ordered a wishing machine, and a wishing machine to bring about the things that we wish. When most of the times, I don't know about you, myself, oftentimes I'm, I'm pretty content with the way things are most. So I really don't spend much time thinking about what I might be wishing for, honestly. And when the opportunity presents itself to ask the universe to produce, to provide, to uh, match my preference even, that the Council of 
human elders backs us up in helping with what we wish for, what we can imagine we want, how do we want to take this time, uh, you know, a month, two weeks, however long that the world is paused to be reformed in the way that we want it to be. What do we want? You know, what do we really, really want? We really, really are the ones who produce it. So we probably should have spent a little bit of time thinking about what we really want. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> So yeah, that's a it's good like an idea. invitation to focus on yeah. what do you actually want? Right. What do you wish for? What would you wish for on the star? So that's, that's what it brings up to me. Yeah, me too. And I also think that we can definitely step out of the singular wish. Um, I know that manifestation is big and everything on this planet now due to like popular culture bringing it forth this human collective is actually wise and it does bring forth what we need and this time period of this crisis virus stuff it was decided by all of us it wasn't when there's no victims here oh, we were like, working on it for it a long a, time it's a very very particular situation in our history and one of the things to remember is that up to this point, we've been very focused on what do I want. I want a beautiful boyfriend, a beautiful girlfriend. I want a car and a house and I want a good, satisfying job. Giant bank account. A giant bank account. You know, this is Stuff. the type of things, yeah, that a lot of the manifestation exercises and teachers have been going on about. Right? But, and it, there's nothing wrong with that, absolutely nothing. But it's good to balance it out, right? I think that there's thing that's a good thing for you to achieve all of your desires because one of the Buddhist lines, you know, one of the Buddhist uh, paths yeah. is the path of enlightenment through desire, which is you achieve all your desires and once you do that, then you focus on the only desire left is your enlightenment. <laughs> so to me, it's a desire for all of these things. Once those are dis satisfied, then you can desire for our human collective. Okay? So because nowadays we are very focused on our species and our, how well everybody's doing, I think that because you're listening to this podcast, I know that you think beyond the singular. You're thinking beyond just yourself and your family. And I think that this would be a perfect opportunity for all of us to start daydreaming what our world looks like as it steps into that high frequency experience. So what is it that you want But for us? What is it that you want for us? Right? What do you want? Education us. to look at, like, for what us. do you want work to look like for us? What do you want the economy, economy system to look like for us? I think that a lot of a lot of things are changing, and somebody said it today. They said it's not going to go back. Not the way it was. It's not, no. not going to go back how how it used to be. So know this. And how, how will it be if it doesn't go back to how it used to be? This is our opportunity to make it that high frequency experience. This is a huge opportunity to make that happen. So that, that would be my request for you. Daydream it and start wishing for us. And if you can't think of anything, then I would ask you to join me in my wish and my daydream. What does the world look like if we lift the veil of forgetfulness from our eyes and our hearts and our awareness field? I like that very much. Yeah. So daydream that. Remember, we can daydream anything into existence. And um, so that would be my... And have the intent. The intent, you can use words such as, I, 
I, my, the veil of forgetfulness lifts from my awareness, my mind and my body. That would, you know, say it enough times and it'll start happening. Or you would say our instead of just yes, mine. You could say our, yeah. Our, is, Our uh, veil of forgetfulness lifts from this planet. That's better. <laughs> yes. A little broader. Yeah. Or you can do both. You can do both. Right? Because I'm a believer in balance. A balance between the I, me, and myself, and the us, we, and ourselves. That's a good thing. I like it. Anything you want to add? Well, I just know there are dozens and dozens and dozens, if not hundreds and hundreds and thousands of people who are daydreaming and imagining all kinds of things right now. And uh, the ones that are being powered by fear are going to be scattered and erratic and, <clears throat> you know, um, conflicting, conflicted. And yours, your imaginations that are powered by um, love, um, happiness, joy, interest, interest in the high frequency planetary experience. Those ones are all focused and empowered and supported by Gaia herself, himself, Gaia, and that Universal Council of Elders. Definitely. So, you got a lot of juice. Yeah, you got a lot of juice. <laughs> With that said, I think it's a beautiful way to finish this podcast. <laughs> I think so too. And we'll see you on the next one. Have a wonderful split. Have a wonderful split. <laughs>